Okay, this is what I'm filming in today. Our little pig house. <laughs> but I'm just gonna angle you down so that I can nuzzle myself back there, okay? You wanna come in and cuddle me? <laughs> you wanna scratch yourself? I thought that this is my video that you guys were just gonna be in. Was I mistaken? Is it good for you if I sit right here? <laughs> Ugh, she did not like that. Oh, but she did sit on me. <laughs> Greetings, loved ones, and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> and welcome to my hog house. Um, I'm filming this video out here today because, well, I've never filmed in this establishment before. And before Finley and I left for our Christmas travels, we moved this into this part of the barn for them so that they can have their little heat lamp and their little cuddle time with all the hay in here. And they've been really enjoying it, but I haven't spent much time in here. So I decided just to come and hang out today with the pigs. Peachy is over here just cuddling up and leaning against me, and I think she's gonna fall over soon. Peachy has officially fallen down, and Dougie's in front of me, if you guys can see her ears. So I figured for my first video of 2021, why not come outside here to the pig house and do a little personal Q&A with these honker ladies. I've done two of these in the past, personal Q&As in my pig pen, and they've been hits. You guys really enjoy them, so I figured why not catch up with you guys today. I actually have a lot of questions, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get right the hell on into it. And let me just start with <laughs> saying that I got so many wedding questions. I mean, naturally, because I just got engaged on December 23rd. And so I'm gonna spend the first few minutes just answering all of the wedding questions, okay? So. First things first, and probably my most asked question was, when are you thinking of holding the wedding? And right now, our timeline is like, maybe spring 2022. It's very difficult, as you can probably imagine, to plan a wedding in the middle of a pandemic. So we're just gonna be kind of holding off, enjoying being engaged, enjoying being fiancés, and just chillaxing. Um, because I don't really want to jump into any wedding planning right now because everything is so up in the air and uncertain and so we're just yeah telling friends and family and you guys just generally maybe spring 2022 it's open-ended <laughs> the next question I got a lot was where do you want to hold your wedding do you want it to be in Oregon do you want it to be in Georgia or Virginia or California where would you like it to be held so we're gonna do an East Coast wedding that's the tentative plan right now we don't know if we'll have it in Georgia or in Virginia. I feel like if we had it in Virginia, we would just use Finley's family's property because it's a free venue <laughs> and also because it's so beautiful. So definitely considering that. But also I feel like a Georgia barn kind of vibe would be cool. That's the plan. It's definitely East Coast. Why is Ducky sleeping outside of the pen is what I'm wondering. Ducky, hey. She's really sleepy, so I really only have one hog right now. I also got lots of questions about like a wedding theme or colors I wanna have, or just, yeah, what is the wedding gonna look like? And first things first, I just wanna say theme-wise, the only theme for me is kind of like fairy, mossy, kind of woodland vibes, but also trying to stay as sustainable as possible. I really want to be able to like achieve a sustainable wedding, and I think that it's definitely possible to do so, so that's definitely part of the theme is keeping it all natural. I also got a lot of questions about like how traditional our wedding will be, um, if we want to have it in a church or not, or on a beach or where, you know? And I was raised Catholic but Finley was not and I'm not a practicing Catholic so I have no intention of getting married in the Catholic Church um, I would really like to get married just in nature um, maybe have the reception in some sort of a large barn you know that's really my vibe and Finley's vibe as well so I think we're in agreement on that um, as for like traditionality I don't really know entirely what you mean by this question Peach is like eating my back what are you doing come on let me cuddle you I want to cuddle you, Ducky. Look, me and Peachy are cuddling, but we miss you. We want to cuddle you. Come on. See, Peachy's coming out to make room for you, it seems. Where's this woman going? I told you you can't eat my kombucha bottle. Shit. Okay, now we have the question of the hour. Truly. I can't even tell you the amount of times that I got asked this. 
I thought that, you know, when is the wedding going to be would be the number one question, but the number one question is, will you and Finley still practice an open relationship in your marriage? And I got different variations of this, like now that you're engaged, are you still open and all this stuff? And I have to say, I made an entire video about my open relationship on my Patreon, and I will link that video down below. But in that video, I basically was saying like, I think that people have a lot of misconceptions or just ideas in their heads about what an open relationship is. And once you say you're open, then you stay open forever and you're just always, you know, with that label. But Finley and I are both, and we've talked about this, I feel like in our relationship Q&A that we filmed at like the end of 2018, um, we're pretty much both on the same page of like, we're open to talking about it. But like, just because we have used that label in the past doesn't mean we're constantly seeking partners. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And that is the biggest misconception I feel like about open relationships is that like, just because you use that, then you're like constantly on Tinder looking for other people or whatever it might be. But to us, open is just like, we're open to the idea of like, you know, being able to explore that and talking about it. That's a huge thing is just having the conversation and being able to express attraction or just discuss things. But this just hasn't been a reality this year either during the pandemic. And I don't feel like it's going to be a huge thing for us in the future where we're going to be needing to have all these conversations about all of these various attractions we'll be having because we're going to be married and we're going to have kids and it's like you know you just don't have the time <laughs> but to answer your question i feel like the simplest way to answer this is just to say that we're open to exploring that in our marriage but i'm not going to say that we are going to have an open marriage because then people are just going to take it out of context you know what i mean but even right now we are way closer to monogamous than ever before you know we're literally fucking engaged so it's like I don't know. If you want to hear more, you can go and watch that video on my Patreon. It was very well received and I got to answer some questions from you guys and just generally explain it. And um, I'm happy that I filmed that because I get questions about it every time I do a Q&A because people are naturally curious, you know, but I feel like it's not as deep as people make it out to be, if that makes sense. So that's my explanation. Another juicy one here is, do you still listen to Mod Sun? You never talk about him anymore. What's the tea? <laughs> and I would say that there is really no tea other than the fact that I grew up um, and I kind of grew out of loving his music as much as I did. I don't really listen to it at all anymore. Sometimes it will be recommended to me through like the algorithm on YouTube and I'll watch, you know, what his music has become and be like, yeah, that's nice. But it's just really moved very far away from like stoner girl era and, you know, first take sessions era that I grew up on and loved so much. So it's just really like a smaller level of interest, I suppose, um, throughout the years. And I don't think that that's crazy to grow out of loving an artist so much because I do that with plenty of musicians and so much though that I forget music existed that I used to listen to in high school, you know what I mean? Like, I also used to be obsessed with G-Eazy and it's like, I haven't listened to a G-Eazy song in years. I don't remember the last time, you know? So it's like, just because I, I really enjoyed that in high school doesn't mean that I have to enjoy it for the rest of my life. But I feel like people think that there's like some huge big falling out or like some big drama that they're not being let in on, you know? And I'm like, no, <laughs> really nothing crazy. The next question is, have you found it hard living in a farm community as a woman? And I would say no. I've never thought, wow, I really have trouble fitting in here because I'm a woman. It's more so like, wow, I really have trouble fitting in here because everybody else is older than me and all of the young people grow up and move out and go to Portland or somewhere else. Or maybe they settle down here and I just don't know them, you know what I mean? But it's more so that there's an age gap situation and that's why I feel slightly um, as though it's hard living in a farm community. But at the same time, I really like this kind of slowed down lifestyle. And I've always been one to be told, you know, you got an old soul. And so I really get along with people of all ages. And most of my friends are 30 plus in this community, you know, if not 40 plus. And then all of my other friends live in Salem and they live in Portland and I'll just commute to go see them. 
so that's the haps. This question is about kids, and I always get a couple of these questions whenever I film a personal Q&A, but I love talking about kids, so let's get into it. This person asks, would you ever homeschool your kids? And I feel like I've talked about this before, but <laughs> Finley and I are definitely very open to the idea of homeschooling our kids and are leaning more towards that than traditional public schooling. You know, I have my own qualms with the public school system here in America specifically. But that doesn't mean that there aren't great schools and great places to send your kids and all of that kind of stuff. And I know that this is just going to be like a whole conversation that we'll have when we have kids. But right now when we have conversations about it, because we actually were just talking about this on the road trip, and we both want to homeschool, but we want to do it correctly and well and in an educated way, obviously. And so if we don't know or we don't have the skills to be homeschooling, we won't homeschool, you know? Because sure, we have the time, but do we have the knowledge? I don't know. So Finley specifically is like, I really want to study. I really want to know like exactly which topics I want to delve into with my kids and like get a curriculum nailed down. And like, then I'll consider like, wow, this is really a good path for us. But until then, it's kind of just up in the air until we have said kids that we want to homeschool. Next question is, how much did you and Finn talk about marriage before engagement? You can't eat my phone. We've been talking about like who would be in our wedding party and where we would go on our honeymoon and all that kind of stuff since 2019. And so I'd say we've been talking about it actively for at least like two years or something like that. But it's not like we had the conversation every day, like when are we gonna get married, you know? But I knew that he was gonna propose over Christmas. So we definitely had our, our conversations and such before then. A question I also got a few times was, is there anybody who was not happy about your engagement or anybody who disapproved? And no, <laughs> I didn't tell anybody to where they were like, what the hell or anything, or I had a bad reaction. Everybody was very happy for us super stoked and it was great sharing that experience with everybody so um, I definitely didn't have anybody who opposed <laughs> at least to my face <laughs> wow Ducky's really here wow you're really here Missy can't believe it I feel like the lighting just changed as soon as I got in here with her somebody else asked how long do you want to wait to have kids I want to have kids as soon as we're married I also got asked, what part of your wedding are you most excited for, besides marrying Finley? <laughs> and I'm most excited to have my musical friends hopefully perform. Someone asked me, have you ever questioned your sexuality? I'm sorry if this is out of place. I love you. <laughs> and yeah, I have, for sure. I feel like I questioned it more when I was like... 18, 19, like first years living in LA. It was very situational. Um, and I always came back to the fact of like, I would be DTE, down to explore, but I don't consider myself bi or have a label, you know? But I would be open to trying the experience, I suppose. So that's what I have to say about that. And somebody asked, how do you feel about Finley posting his personal political views on social media? Meaning on his Instagram story. <laughs> and um, I just thought this was funny, so I wanted to answer it because I feel like I have no remarks about this other than he can do whatever he wants. And I never read his stuff and I'm like, darn, I wish you wouldn't share that. You know what I mean? Because we have very similar political views. And he's just pretty well-spoken as well. So I just love when he shares his opinions because I feel like instead of just a digestible infograph that everybody's reposting, he's like sharing his thoughts in depth you know, in a bunch of slides. And I always read it and I'm like, ugh, I love this man. You know, I'm never like, ugh, delete this. So that's how I feel about that. Um, somebody asked me, what is your favorite song to do the deed to? And to this I say, no song at all. We don't listen to music when we do the deed, ever. I feel like maybe once I have a memory of us doing that and I don't really want to do it again. I don't know. It's just never really been part of our our routine, you know? All right, guys, my camera died, so sorry. <laughs> Let's get back to aing your cues. Hi, you guys smell like maple syrup again. Okay, this next question, I really wanted to answer just because I think that the way that they worded it is so funny and I wanna go into more depth on this. So this person says, power to body hair, but will you shave for the wedding? <laughs> 
And I wanted to talk about this further because they were so enthusiastic, like, go you, but will you shave it all off for, you know, the pictures? And because there will be people around and because maybe you won't want it then or whatever whatever the reason was i just thought it was kind of interesting to be like yeah go you but also like do you think you should take it off and this is why body hair is still taboo or shamed or whatever is because you know you don't see it in people's wedding photos and you don't see it during big events when they're having a photo shoot or whatever it might be you know what i mean um and i feel like I want to keep it for my wedding. I don't feel a reason to remove it just for that. I think that it's going to be cute to have a little bit of hair underneath my wedding dress or something like that. And yeah, that's what I have to say to that. This person asked an interesting question that I like, especially for the pandemic world that we're living in. How to foster romance and attraction with a long-term boyfriend when you can't go on dates right now? So. To make it funky, fresh, and fun, Finley and I sometimes go on a hike, go on a little walkie poo together. It depends on where you live, obviously, but maybe you could go to a river, some kind of a nature establishment, a dog park, perhaps, wearing your masks if it's more populated and there's people around. But um, definitely date ideas can be hiking for sure. Um, but also, this was really cute. During the, I feel like the beginning of the pandemic, we had like a car picnic and we got Chipotle and then we drove to a little lookout and just listened to music and just, yeah, it was a nice time. So car dates, definitely ideal. Also just like regular picnics, either in your yard or at a park, if it's safe to be doing so in your area. And also drive-in movie theaters. I don't know if those are a thing around where you live specifically, but that is a quarantine date that we had going to the Newburgh 99 West drive-in here in Oregon. It's about like an hour 50 from us. Pretty far, but it was worth it. <laughs> she just nudged the shit out of me. This was a fun question that I have never answered somebody asked me to rank all of mac miller's albums it's getting so dark dude shit if i were to rank mixtapes on this i would have a completely different list so let's just do this after further introspection number one is the divine feminine number two is watching movies with the sound off number three is circles number four is best day ever number five is swimming six is blue slide park seven is good i am I guess. But if we're including mixtapes, Faces would definitely be in my top eight. I really could just go on with this one. But instead, I'm gonna end it off on a question from my girl, Katie. But Katie asks, what is your favorite quality about yourself? Not physical. What's your favorite you thing? <laughs> my favorite me thing is probably my ability to stay positive throughout crazy events and my gratitude, I guess during crazy times just thinking about you know sure things are shit but also at the same time there's a lot of good so i feel like that really was very prominent for me and understanding that i love that about myself especially after the wildfires and the evacuation order and everything like that this year and um, i feel like it just kind of proved to be true even more so because i just stayed stayed positive through it all and um it paid off in the end and even if it didn't pay off i still would have kept positive because we still would have been able to have a house rebuilt or find a different house to move to you know there was still positives to that situation even if the worst were to have happened but now i'm getting into a whole thing <laughs> but i just wanted to catch up with you guys i haven't done a q a in many months so i figured that it was time and also just a nice thing just to reflect and answer and catch up with you guys um on questions you've been having in your minds especially at the beginning of a new year i love doing that peach is absolutely conked out right in front of me right now i don't know if you guys can see her but this is missy peachy i have a little like speck right here on my camera like a pixel that's broken and it you can especially see it at night but i'm like when the hell did this happen and how i don't know but ducky is somewhere in the darkness back here cuddling oh my god she snores when i lay on her <laughs> okay okay sorry sorry i didn't mean to rile you up anyways guys it's really getting dark now i mean i knew i would lose daylight upon filming this at 
4 30 p.m but i didn't think it would get dark this fucking fast but i gotta wrap it up i'm gonna go stream on twitch if you didn't know i stream every monday wednesday and friday on twitch which is twitch.tv slash megan hughes if you want to come to a live stream ask me some questions in real time and hang the hell out with me and you can find me on patreon at patreon.com slash megan hughes i upload a ton of stuff to there every single month and until my next video stay smiling bye guys thanks for asking all these cues i loved a and m <laughs> Thank you.